with a vast library of over 1,200 events from boxing's most notable bouts of all time. Boxing TV melds the past great with today's promising young star. Boxing TV is the free go-to destination for everything boxing, including classic bouts, live events, and news and information. Boxing TV is available on Local Now, Distro TV, Sports.TV, Select TV, and www.watchboxing.tv. Follow Abrams Boxing on social media at Abrams Boxing on Twitter, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, and at Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Welcome to the Abrams Boxing Show. I'm Mark Abrams. Today we will go over the news results and everything in the world of boxing. Uh, Errol Spence's big win over your Dennis Ugas. We'll preview Tyson Fury's title defense against Dillian White. We have got three special guests. We got Mercedo Hesta. Joel Diaz, who will be taking on each other this Saturday, uh, this Thursday night, live on the zone. Plus, Tevin Farmer, the former 130 pound world champion, who will take some Mickey Bay on March 21st in Accra, Ghana. Let's start in Dallas, Texas, or actually Arlington, Texas, to be precise. Errol Spence Jr., 28 0, 22 knockouts, added the WBA welterweight title to already him owning the IBF and WBC titles with a 10th round stoppage over your Dennis Ugas in a, a pretty entertaining fight. It was, it was a very good fight that both guys, they, they stood in the pocket for the most part. Spence dominated the action, and uh, except for a little spot in round six where he got hit, his mouthpiece went flying. He got buckled a little bit back in the ropes. That seemed to wake him up because round seven, eight, nine, and ten, he uh, – Kind of get went on an onslaught and closed the eye, and we later learned that or Dennis, uh, your Dennis Ugas's right eye, uh, the orbital bone was was broke uh, around the eye. So, uh, and then the fight was stopped because uh, the, the grotesque swelling there. So, Errol Spence uh, again goes to twenty eight zero, and uh, we look forward to a fight maybe with Terence Crawford. That's the fight everyone's calling for. Both guys seem to want it. We'll see what happens as the. Uh, weeks and months, uh, you know, precipitate. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, the boxing fans will get what they want. Um, so uh, we will look for, uh, see what's next for Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford. And uh, Ugas, uh, you know, he, he did okay in, in defeat. So we'll definitely see him back in some big fights uh, after he heals up from the broken orbital boom. Undercard was so-so. Got you know, some explosive knockouts. One one was Isaac Cruz, the former world title challenger who just fought Gervonta Davis. Destroyed your, what was what's left of Yuri Orcus Gamboa. Just rocked him, dropped him four times. Finished him off with a vicious right hand in round five that, you know, you could probably hear from uh, from Arlington all the way to uh, Amarillo. So, I mean, that was Isaac Cruz. Expect him. Big fight again. Uh, very exciting fighter is the uh, the young Mexican fighter. He's now 23-2-1 with 16 knockouts. Also, rising light, uh, lightweight contender, Jose Valenzuela, kind of announced himself on the steam with a 85-second uh, uh, knockout over former world champion Francisco Vargas. Valenzuela landed a vicious left hand, and down went Vargas. Fight was uh, over. Valenzuela is now 12-0 with eight knockouts. And then uh, world-ranked and undefeated welterweight contender Cody Crowley at second. Second straight solid win, defeated uh, Kadrillo uh, uh, to Kakarov uh, recently. And wins a 10 run unanimous decision over Jose Cito Lopez, scores are 98 91 twice and 99 90 for Cody Crowley. So he continues to climb up the rankings. Uh, the, the show it was successful on site, almost 40,000 people at ATT Stadium in Arlington, Texas, to see, uh, to see uh, th 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 this great show. Uh, uh, on Saturday night live on Showtime pay per view. Uh, also, uh, some uh, you know some fights on the uh, Showtime portion of the card. Radza Butayev, uh, he actually lost. The uh, Mantis Stanionis is now the WBA regular champion with a, uh, a twelve round. It was called a split decision for um, Stanionis. One fourteen, one thirteen for Butayev. 116, 111, 117, 110 for Stanionis. Stanionis now is a, is a key player in the welterweight division. You know, we mentioned Spence, we mentioned Crawford. You know, you want to put Cody Crowley, that now, you know, obviously because we're talking about him. You want to put Boots and his Virgil Ortiz, uh, Connor Ben, who we'll talk to <coughs> excuse me, in a second. And then, you know, so there's some good feet in the welterweight division. Uh, also, opening up the Showtime card was Brandon Lee, who Maybe a welterweight at some point in the near future. 
went to 25 and 0. He's won to 12, a 10 running damage decision over Zachary Ochoa. So that opened up the showtime portion. Friday night, Ontario, California, former world title challenger Ruben Villa scored a ninth round stoppage over Horacio Garcia. Uh, so Villa took a, about 17 month absence. <coughs> Looks good. Um, you know, look, look good in the fight. One of the best fights I've seen him fight. So he will be right back in the featherweight title mix sooner rather than later. Saturday in Manchester, England, Connor Ben scored an explosive second round stoppage over Chris Van Heerden. Uh, ben, who's ranked uh, in the top five in all the major sanctioning bodies, again, threw his name in the hat, w- whether it's a Crawford fight or a fight with uh, uh, Spence or one of those alike. So uh, maybe after a couple more fights they were saying and you know uh, Amir Khan came in the ring maybe uh, uh, Kel Brook David Avanesian one of those type of guys we will probably see Connor Ben in later uh, in the year uh, looking ahead to this Thursday night live on the zone Joel Diaz Jr. is t- takes on Mercedo has to in, in a lightweight fight uh, which Will be a you know an interesting fight that both guys kind of in the same spot. Diaz twenty six no twenty six and two twenty two knockouts has to thirty two three and three seventeen knockouts. I had a chance to talk to both fighters uh, this week, and so uh, here's my uh, talk with Joel Diaz Jr. My next guest uh, next Thursday night, April twenty first, takes on Mercedo Hesta in the. Main event of Golden Boys' new series on the Zone, Joel Diaz Jr. How you doing today? Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing great. And yourself? Doing good. 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 Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, well, we got this big fight April 21st live on the Zone against Mercedo Hesta. What are your thoughts uh, as you uh, wind down that training camp? Um, as I'm winding down now, I'm more than ready. You know, we got a one week to go, and weight is good. It's been sparring some pretty good, some pretty good rounds, and just uh, not taking this training camp lightly, you know. Um, just continuing, just just continuing, and hoping, uh, waiting for my comeback this this upcoming Thursday. Twenty six and two, twenty two big knockouts. Uh, you know, uh, you you were rolling along. You uh, obviously you had that disappointing fight against uh, Regis Progress, and then the law. Uh, yeah. th- th- then you suffered another loss. To uh, uh, Coria, two fights down in Mexico. I guess see, I don't know if you want to term them kind of quote off Broadway type of fights. Uh, what what was the reasoning for that? Just trying to stay busy, you know. Just uh, staying staying busy and keep keeping my name in the loop, you know. Um, coming back from from those from both of those fights, it was. It, I mean, uh, just 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 trying to stay active in the game, you know. So people don't forget who Joe Diaz is, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, I talked to Mercedo, and uh, uh, first, let me get your opinion. What do you think of him as a fighter at this stage of his career? I personally think he is a great fighter. Um, I, you know, I've moved with him around back in the day, out and when we were in Big Bear together, but that was a couple of years back. You know, I mean, I don't think nothing changed with him, but uh, just. Um, not going to take this 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 fight lightly, you know. I um I asked him a question yesterday. You guys are kind of in similar spots. You guys have great records. Uh, yeah, cu- couple you know little setbacks here or there. Kind of you know need that breakthrough win to kind of get back into the 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 mix of the inner circle of the lightweight division. Is that the way you kind of, kind of look at it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Um. This would this fight will definitely get me back in the loop. Um, hopefully back in in in, in the gr- in the good rankings and hopefully in, uh, for for a major fight. The, uh, this fight is going to be at lightweight. Uh, obviously, you fought above the weight a bunch of fights at 140 and even uh, 142 pounds. Uh, obviously, the, the progress fight was 140 pounds. You, do you look back on that and say, you know what, maybe I should have stayed around 135 or? Uh, um, Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But, uh, yeah, I actually do. Um, I came down to, I believe I want to say I went at 137 for that progress fight, um, which would, it was no, I mean, it was, it, it was no biggie, biggie making the 140 mark, you know, and uh, I think that was kind of our fault for trying to go up on weight, I guess. 
maybe we should have more fights at 135 to see to see where uh, our limits were. But I mean, uh, mm-hmm. it is what it is, you know. We're back here at 135, and hopefully, we take over the division. It was that was it like one of those things where you know it was it was a real good opportunity nationally televised the whole nine yards it was that was that more or less the case for that fight let let's let's just say it was uh uh no no comment you know <laughs> no comment no comment but um back at uh, lightweight and hopefully to take over the division as the years come by it's a great division uh it's a good segue back to, to 135 it's a great division a lot of stuff going on. You got Tank Davis. He's got his big fight. Ryan just had a, had a great win last week. And you got Cambosis yeah. and Haney getting it on. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, after these all shake out, they, I mean, you feel a win or you're going to need a win and maybe a win, another win or two against a, a decent guy to get uh, you right back in that mix? A win, and that that's all I need, no? Um, after this fight, hopefully, whatever my manager, Sam Cotteres, has for me and whatever Golden Boy has for me, then – we're willing to take on whatever whatever they, they throw at us, you know? Um, as I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't want to say it, but I'm, I'm getting older. I'm not getting no younger. I just want to I just want to fight anybody, and, I mean, at the top after this fight. You're, you're headlining, I guess this is the uh, first card on the Golden Boys' new Thursday night series uh, that, that they're doing, a, a, the first one in Indio, California. You know, w- w- with meaningful fights, you know, people can crossroads, whatever. It's, you know, kind of like a real meaningful fight for both of you guys, because like we mentioned before, the, the winner is going to get something out of this. How do you feel about being tabbed to be uh, in the first uh, the first main event? Uh, I feel great. I feel great. And um, other than that, I just need to prove to myself. I need to prove to the people and to prove to myself that. I'm capable of doing and uh, I'm do, taking over the lightweight division, you know, and uh, hopefully with God's plan that that goes through. Uh, um, do you take this fight? And I'm sure you take every fight as, you know, must win, do or die, you know, whatever you want to uh, uh, term it. But do you feel, you know, the importance of this fight in terms of this maybe be, be a little bit more important than some of the other fights? Um, I do. <laughs> I, I, I do because that's this is gonna get me back in the in the, in the loop, you know. But um, you don't take no no fight lightly, you know. I mean, as my, I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but as my second loss, uh, as my second loss, um, I kind of took that one a little bit too light and look at the outcome. But uh, we live and we learn, you know. That that one stays in the past, and hopefully, we just continue to keep moving forward. You think boxing insiders, boxing media, they're they're sleeping on you because of that? Um, I believe they are. You know, um, I believe they are. You know, you, you got to start from the bottom now. You you really, when they say you had to start from the bottom, is it, you literally have to start from the bottom. You got to work your way back up, and that's what we're doing. And hopefully, with this win next Thursday, we're going to continue to keep keeping our name in the loop. You know, and continue to keep going, and whatever the Golden Boy has to throw at us, that we're going to be more than ready. Well, anything you want to say to the fans in closing before we see you in the ring headlining on Thursday, April twenty first, live on the Zone, uh, Golden Boy's new uh, series at the uh, Fantasy Springs in uh, Indio, California. That puts a big smile on me just to hear it right now. But I just want to say, I just want to tell everybody, thank you for keeping me. Keeping me on my toes, you know, and um, hopefully to see everybody that can make it out there. Hopefully we can see everybody there. And, and if you can't make it, then you can catch me on the zone, live on the zone. On all my interviews, I have one goal, either try to make my guests smile or cry. So I may, yeah. be, I, 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 I may be smiling. Yeah, so, so, hey, uh, if, if you were to make me cry, then we would have a problem. You know? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, thank, thank you guys. And, um, Hopefully it's a hit for you guys soon. Thank you for a couple minutes of your time. We wish you best of luck, and uh, we, you know, we'll talk to you along the way. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thanks Thank for you. having me on. Thank have you. Have a good day. There you have it, Joel Diaz Jr. He'll be in the main event this Thursday night on April the 21st, taking on my next guest, a former uh, you know, real contender, and he's looking for a big shot to get back into contention this Thursday night, that is Mercedo Hesta, and this is how the interview went. Yes. Joining us now is uh, 
Mercedo Hesta, who on April 21st will take on Joel Diaz Jr. in the main event of a Golden Boys new series, Thursday night series uh, on the zone. Mercedo, how you doing? I'm doing good. I feel great. Um, about to start with my dad after this uh, workout, start my, I mean, this interview, I'm going to start my workout. So talk about this fight uh, on the, on April 21st uh, against Joel Diaz. What, what are your thoughts on this fight? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's been a while uh, since my last fight. Things happened. There's COVID and a lot of things going on. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm positive now, actually, that my wife's pregnant as well. So uh, I came in this camp uh, very, very happy and with, with a lot of energy uh, towards my camp. So um, I'm, I'm excited and can't wait to get back again in the ring. You, you just mentioned COVID. Was that, was that the uh, main reason or the uh, most of the reason why this uh, two and a half year layoff? Uh, well, I was supposed to fight one, uh, I forgot, oh, was that 2020 20 or 21? Uh, but I, I, I had a po food uh, poisoning and that the fight didn't happen. And after that, you know, I, I kind of relaxed a little bit. And there's some couple of fights that a lot of fights that time that fell off because of COVID. But, um, you know, a lot of things. So, yeah, but for me, I, I still stay positive, keep doing, trying to get in shape. And now I'm here and I can't wait to get back. Joel Diaz Jr., talk about him as an opponent. Yes. Uh, well, Joel Diaz, uh, you know, I, I've watched some of his fight, strong, a hard hitter fighter. Um, you know, I think for me uh, to get the victorious, is need to be the quicker, quicker fighter, faster fighter, and, you know, uh, make him miss and counter. And, you know, definitely we have a game plan towards that. Uh, but, you know, even though I feel like I'm the quicker and the faster fighter, I still need, can't uh, underestimate because, you know, both of us has both two hands and anything could happen in the ring. This fight, I, I believe, is going to be at 140 pounds. Uh, moving up in weight, you've uh, you know, you've done well. Hovering around the lightweight limit of 135, 140. How's that suit you? You, you know, actually, uh, someone asked me too about 140. Actually, we we're fighting for 135. Uh, okay. Fight. Yes. So I see. Yes. Okay. So 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 I guess I ask another question. You know, one of those yeah. fighters you see, you've been around 135 for just about your whole career. Uh, Yes. Uh, and you've, you've, had, you've had a long and distinguished career. Uh, ha, ha, have you ever had the uh, inclination to move up? Or, but see, it seems like you make 135 and still after all these years. Yes, I can still make 135. Well, uh, although I made a 140 uh, fight back then, um, but that was just like, a, you know, not the big fights. Um but you know, 135, I still feel comfortable at 135. I uh, still can make it 135. So um, I, I stay I stay in 135, especially right now. There's a lot of good fighters in that 135 division. You and Joel, you guys both have great records. You're 31-3. He's, I believe, 28-2. and two. But, but similar in the sense that you guys have always been maybe like one fight away from breaking through for that big fight. Is, is that the way you look at it? You know, you, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're, you just, you've been knocking on the door for me. I know you fought, you know, Vasquez and fought for the world title, but uh, uh, you know, you've been this close to kind of breaking through for that big fight opportunity. Is that the way you look at it? Him and you kind of in the same spot? Could be, yes, yes, it could be. Um, you know, I know he's also looking for that break again, and I think uh, also, also me. Uh, uh, that's that's always the goal as a fighter. You know, fighting for a world title and and win for a world uh, championship fight. So uh, one thirty five. It's a strong division, obviously. Uh, uh, you know, Ryan Garcia, a big win over the the weekend. Javante Davis, Cambos is fighting Haney. There are some so there are some big opportunities there, you know, especially with this win, maybe another win, and you're right in the mix. Is that the way you feel? Yes, you know, as a, as a fighter, you always get I always get ex excited uh, seeing uh, good fighters, 
uh, that dominating and you know someday we, we I wish that I could face them. And that's that's the goal, you know, as a fighter. Once you become a fighter, you're always gonna be a fighter, and you always challenge yourself and thinking that you know what I want to fight the best. Tell the fans out there, we'll let you go in a second. Tell the fans out there, uh, just some final thoughts. But you know what we you know can expect out to see out of you on uh, April twenty first. Yes, uh, to all my fans out there, the new No Mercy fans, you know I can't wait to see you guys. I hope you guys can can make it to the fight uh, at Thursday fight night uh, at Indio Fantasy Spring. Get your t- get your tickets right now, and I have a great camp. I have a good camp. Now I'm finishing up with my dad, um, so uh, it's gonna be uh, uh, it's gonna be a good fight. No, uh, and and how I fight, it could be it's gonna be a great fight. I can't wait to see you guys there. Well, we look forward to seeing this fight, some Thursday night fight action live on the Zone. Mercedo, thank you for a few minutes of your time, and we'll talk to you along the way. And best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, Mercedo Hesta, who takes on Joel Diaz Jr. this Thursday night. Live on the zone from the uh, Fancy Springs Resort, Indio, California. Uh, this Saturday afternoon here in the United States, 2 p.m., pay per view action. Tyson Fury defends the WBC and Lineal Heavyweight Championship against Dillian White uh, in an all British showdown. Looks like there'll be an upwards of count it 94,000 people at Wembley Stadium. It's going to be a terrific scene. Uh, one thing, I, one thing I'm not looking forward to is hearing 94,000 people sing "Sweet Caroline" before the main event. Just, not, I don't, I don't understand the get up with the "Sweet Caroline" uh, uh, singing. But this should give me a good fight. G- going to be a good fight week with Dillian White, who's good personality, and obviously we know Fury is probably the best personality in the game. And uh, it's going to be a good press conference leading up, weigh in, and a, a great atmosphere for me, White does have a puncher's chance in this fight, but the way Fury has been going, you know, since his return to the ring, the two, what the three wilder fights, the, the, you know, the, some of the the other fights he's been in before that he's, he, he's looked sensational. And I have no reason to believe that he won't continue this momentum by maybe stopping or winning a a lopsided decision against Dillian white uh, Saturday. And hopefully uh, we will see, uh, Fury fight the winner of Usyk and Joshua, who look like they'll be getting it on sometime in June, maybe sometime this summer. Uh, so that the, the heavyweight division's heating up uh, once again. We just had the great trilogy with Fury and Wilder, and now we're going to have uh, Fury and White, Usyk and Joshua rematch. So <clears throat> over the last co- next couple months, we'll see some great fights in the <clears throat> heavyweight division. Former world champion Angel Acosta will face John L. Rivera on. May 12th at the Fancy Springs uh, Hotel uh, and Resort in Indio, California. That fight's going to be broadcast on the zone. Some other fights uh, I'm hearing in the works. Uh, uh, also, uh, I believe it's going to be May 14th or May 20th. I forgot the day. I know we'll see Zerto Ramirez back in action on the zone, maybe taking on Do- Dominic Bosell. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some great guests coming on over the next uh, week. So we plan to have Tevin Farmer. We're going to push it back to next week. Uh, and also we're, we're going to uh, review Fury and White. We're going to preview the two big shows on April 30th. That will feature Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez. That fights in Las Vegas live on ESPN. And also the big uh, showdown, maybe the biggest fight in women's boxing history, Amanda Serrano and uh, Katie Taylor. We hope they have some guests on that we – participating. We're working on that on those two shows. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this week. Uh, um, like I said, we're going to be doing this and maybe stretching it out maybe to an hour show in the next few weeks. We just, we just wanted to do a 30-minute uh, program for right now, and I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. For Mark Abrams, I'm